Okay, so we're starting today with a look at uh, Gibbons Falls. Yeah, so they created this uh, really nice walkway along the falls. So you can go up and down and get various views. Kind of nice. Wow, 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 wow. Get another view, a magnificent view of this falls. They're really looking cool. Yeah, and on this side you can see the wall, the vertical wall on, here on both sides of the cliff. Alright, you get the benefit of the snow melt. The fall is in its absolute glory. It runs down the stream. No matter how painful. downstream side of uh, Gibbons Falls. Boy, talk about fragility. I mean, you look at those boulders that are sitting there. Maybe any moment, go. any moment. Nice earthquake, and you got yourself a landslide. Hey, we're on our way to Paint Pots, and uh, on our way, we have these uh, flash springs. And apparently, the only thing that's constant here is change. What we're looking at is uh, blood geyser. It evokes images of gruesome event. The reality is much tamer. High concentration of iron oxide precipitates out, staining the surrounding rocks. Uh, if that's not hot, I don't know what is. See that bubbling? That's how hot that stuff coming out of the ground is. Hey, so here's the view, folks. This is what you see. Just climbing up a bit in this incredible wonderland, Yellowstone Park. Another view of uh, paint pots. If you're an artist, you can come here and just enjoy. Come back the following year. It probably changes quite a bit. This is the coloration that's occurring. The growth of vegetation up and around, keeping a safe distance from the openings in the ground. You can see water boiling and bubbling out of the ground at various locations. Where did I put those nuts? Where are they? I can't remember. All right, let's see if we can capture the essence of this place. Each one of those little points on there, according to the ranger yesterday, was a drop. Of silica. Yeah. Okay, don't get any mud on my camera here, whatever you do, guy. Guys and girls. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> right, so we're uh, at the upper level of the mud pots. You can see over there it looks kind of like oozing out and over here because there's a lot of a lot of water it's more like the soup. Hey just to give you some idea of the activity in the area and what's happening huh? Some more of the blue stuff that we described before. and proceeds on to the red. Great example of different colorations. Yes. And the impact it has on the thing that falls into it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Listen carefully, because it's only going to say it once. Okay, so we're here at the Norris, Norris Geyser yeah. Basin and Museum. Okay, the Norris area, orientation, and the map. Perfect. Perfect. Welcome to Hades. Listen to the sounds. A 
that baby is really spewing out some stuff there. sulfury smell coming out of that. This is called the Crackling Lake. Of course it's hard to make out because a lot of people are around and stuff like that but I'm sure in the evening you can probably hear it do its thing. Oh this is the Crackling right here. Walking further down the uh, platform around Porcelain Basin. So if you're reading, reading Job, this is uh, called the uh, Whale's Mouth. Here, you can see the uh, boardwalks are still uh, a bit icy. The ladies, looking from this angle. There you go ladies, looking great. Looking across uh, Voice the basin at the back end of it. This incredible scene, incredible sky, incredible day. Give you a little panorama of the field here. Observe the beauty of the color of the stream. hard to get a handle on that formation out there and that geyser. So you move from the green to the orange and over there to the blue. And then it floats beyond the boardwalk. Down, down, down. All the way down. And in between, you got these orange flavored items. Trying to capture the orange, the green, the black, the white. All these incredible colors. Just imagine how active that field is with uh, all of that set up in a way that it's spewing throughout. It'd be interesting to know what the geology behind that is. Beautiful. Get a load of that sky. Okay, so here it is. Funerals has been a hot and volatile area for many years. It may look different if you visit again. Side, side vent. So uh, we visited the Porcelain Basin. Now we're on our way to Back Basin. So we're, we're approaching one of our spots here in the Back Basin. Gurgling. Emerald Spring lined with Yellow sulfur, sulfur deposits. Yeah. The yellow, go ahead. That's 27 foot deep. The oh. yellow color of the sulfur combines with the reflected blue light, making the hot spring appear a magnificent emerald blue. It's blue to me. Yeah, it's blue today, yeah? I don't really see much yellow. So All right, here it is. Steamboat geyser. Unpredictable, infrequent, major eruptions of more than 300 feet. Steamboat uh, 
training us to a bit of water gushing. As the steam overcomes us. Okay, so looking down at uh, the, in the back basin away uh, from Steamboat and Geyser, we'll be down there shortly. You see the trees have been denuded as a result of uh, thermal activity here. Cistern spring. Apparently when uh, Steamboat Geyser is ready to erupt, this thing drains. Oh, there's a catch a glimpse of the coloration as the steam goes off and some of the beautiful colors that are involved here. Steamboat Springs giving us its uh, steaming cloud and uh, this uh, beautiful scene here. What's that? Bubble, bubble, we're in trouble. Listening to the bubbling. Gives you a better idea of the result of the iron in the machinist geyser. And we got a pretty heavy dose of uh, sulfur smell here. Everywhere you look, you got these colorations and different results of the water and steam and stuff coming out of the geysers. And it's flowing towards the Gibbous River. Some more aquamarine blue beautiful water coming out in the back basin here. Where does this color come from, huh? Yeah, it is. <laughs> but it could also, you know, because of the time of the year. Yeah, it's another example of a funeral. It, uh, this one is called the Arch Steam Vent. What we've got here is an example of the fact that the temperatures are right for the grass to grow. Every place else we looked, the grass was getting boiled alive, and you can see some of that over here on the right, yeah? But here, it is lush, lush, thick green. Uh, Well-named puffin stuff. We're about... Uh, I don't know, 15 feet away from it. And uh, hey, that's what he's doing. He's puffing and giving us a luxurious taste of sulfur. A natural engine at work, huh? Green Dragon Springs. Uh, Heaviest dose of sulfur we've gotten since we embarked on this hike here. Yeah. Obviously, aptly named. Coming at us pretty strong. This is crazy. Blue mud. Steam vent. It's bubbling away, but. It's like that color that you paint the house. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Looking across the field there at that uh, blue pool. No access to it, but it's kind of fascinating to see it. Pearl geyser. It looks like a pearl. Clamshell. Beautifully formed. There's a gurgling sight there. And a much deeper blue. Much deeper blue. 
spring. It's called Vixen Geyser. This is a crater of an old geyser. You can imagine what this thing must have looked like when it was in full swing here. That little spot where the plume was coming up is creating all this boiling noise. Here's another really, really bubbly spring. This is the minute? Yeah, this is a story of somebody somebody screwing it up. Trash put into it. it used to erupt every 60 seconds up to 40 to 60 feet. But then they got clogged with trash. Oh boy. This was uh, the result of uh, human activity apparently. Somebody was dumping stuff in there. And uh, this is all that's left. And apparently this guy used to go off very often to good height. Yeah. Look at the beauty of the sky. <laughs> yep. oh, one final look at the porcelain basin. Look at his wise old crow. He knows how to work the area here. He knows where to go to get his food. He's no dummy. He's got it all figured out. Yeah. Where'd you go, crow? <laughs>